This is WNEP's Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Join us for streamside adventures. Days in the field with new and old friends. It's all about making memories and following traditions. And exciting hunting experiences with interesting people. We've captured the beauty and majesty of the great outdoors. And it's all next on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Hello everyone and welcome to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. I'm Don Jacobs in the Pennsylvania Outdoor Life cabin. Just a real quick reminder before we get into the rest of the show. Hunting licenses went on sale at the beginning of this week. July 12th, the first time that you can apply for a resident doe permit. So you want to make sure that you get your license relatively soon. Now we're going on to animal rehabilitation, a great place that we visit all the time, the Pocono Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Center. Kathy Euler is in charge of that, and she gives us a little tour. This is Pocono Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Center, and we are an all-species wildlife care facility and education facility located in Northeastern PA. And how long have you been around? I have been doing this for 40 years. Tiring work. Tiring work. Is it a dedication that just anybody can do, or do you consider yourself pretty much a dedicated it, It's person? an exclusive club of people who are dedicated to what we do. So somebody has an injured or orphan animal, you take care of it, your hopes is to release them, right? Exactly. These are baby barred owls. Um, they are not happy about us because we've been feeding them with a mask, which I don't know what I did with the mask, but we wear this when we're when we're feeding them. Sort of like you don't want to inbred yourself on them? Or? Right, we don't want them to get imprinted on people. Imprinted, you yeah. know what he's looking at right now? He's looking at the food supply. Oh, no kidding. So he's already got instincts to go, oh my goodness, that's something I want. <laughs> <laughs> I find that head bop hysterical. It is hysterical. So how old do you think they are? These guys are now about uh, almost two months old. And when would they normally fledge And they're not their siblings, they came in separately. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. When would they normally be okay to go out and fly? And well, right now, if I can turn this guy around a little bit. I know you don't like me. It's okay. You can see that he's getting, even though he's fluffy, his wing feathers come in. Oh, yeah. So he can jump and land. They're called branchers at this age. They end up in the branches of the trees, and their parents keep feeding them until they fly. And then after that, they feed them while they're learning how to hunt, and then they're on their own. Wow. So these guys will go from here into the flight enclosure where our adult barred owls are, where they will get the rest of the tools they need to survive. And they're carnivores, so you have to feed them meat, right? Yes, and eventually live prey. So they have live prey training before they leave because they're not going to have the benefit of their parents giving them continuous care. Cool, cool animal, though. Love that animal. They are wonderful. Love barred owls. So you have animals that are endangered. You have animals that are not rare at all. Right. And, and they're being found by people. Why do you think you're so busy? Well, I think because of COVID, uh, a lot of people are spending time outside and are discovering the outdoors. Uh, it's a good thing that animals are getting found that need help, but we're also getting a lot of people who are finding animals that don't necessarily need help. So the phone's really busy. People are calling and asking questions, which is very helpful, but it is time consuming. Um, but we, we're happy to answer people's questions as they find animals, especially before they interact with them. And this is a... That's a that is a short-eared owl. I don't think I've ever seen one. Well, they live mainly in like north central Pennsylvania and they're in, they live in fields. Okay. So like where harriers are, yeah. you know, like those, they're not forest birds. So they, I may they have even seen nest one, on the, right? Yeah, they even nest on the ground. So they're okay. not, not often seen. We don't have a lot of old field habitat for them. And this one you think is not going to be released? Probably not. We're still in rehab with this one, so. Now you say endangered species, do you need a special permit to keep that one? No, uh, because it's not endangered federally, it's just in Pennsylvania because they've always been rare. You always said education is the tool. It is. People have to know what to do, not only if they find one, but how to watch them carefully, mm -hmm. how to take care of them. Education is yeah. a tool, right? It is. Um, even with all the new people in the Poconos, uh, because we've been doing this for so long, Instead of having fawns coming in that have been fed for three or four days in appropriate diets and, and passing away from that kind of care, we have people calling first or, or they've just they picked it up and then don't know what to do, but they haven't fed it and they haven't done anything. And that, that education makes a huge difference. 
I think this is going to be a first for us. I don't know if it's a first for you because I see white critters in a deer pen. Yeah. Tell me about this. Yeah, we uh, we we actually um, we see piebald fawns from time to time, but we've never had an actual albino fawn, and they're both doing okay so far. I would like to see a little better from the albino, but um, the the little piebald, even though he has a mild case of dwarfism, he's a he's just a little guy. Hey, buddy, I know you already had breakfast, but you're <coughs> Now, this is a pie, <coughs> pie ball. Yeah, you can see he's shorter than he should be. Um, right. He had some problems with his legs curling under, but they're they're starting to correct now. And he has a little bit of a strangely shaped face. So but will he get any whiter are, or darker or uh, anything? This is the color he's going to be. So what makes him part white? Like, what um, is that? It is just a natural... It is? A natural abnormality that, that happens. It's a, just a natural thing that happens and it's not all that uncommon in the Poconos. Huh. So that when it grows up, male or female, it's going to be that color in, yep. the, in the herd. This one happens to be a male. Okay. By the way, this is not milk that you buy at the store. That is deer, white-tailed deer milk that we get from a company that makes white-tailed deer milk. And it's gone. And it's gone. <laughs> now, and it's this, a special bottle and everything. Will this deer end up in the pen with the other older deer? It will. Deer with it the, will. Okay. We just want to make sure, we want to keep him with that guy until he's okay. Right. He's like a buddy. Right. Um, and the albino, is a true albino? Yeah. How do you tell? Um, he's got pink eyes and pink ears. Um, his spots, let me see if I can get him in the shade for you so you can see the spots on him, because you can actually see the spots. Come here, you shouldn't be in the sun anyway. See the spots? Oh yeah, I, oh my goodness, yeah. Just a brighter white. Yeah. How oh, cool a stretch, that? there you go. Doesn't look that good, Cappy. Is it, is it fighting? It's, um, it is doing well. It went it through a bout of E. coli, which causes bloody diarrhea, and we got him through that. Um, so he's just, you know, yeah. just doesn't have that really strong, tough life force yet. We're working on it. So this is where our fawns are until they go up on the hill. Yeah. This way, if there's any problems like this E. coli infection, we don't spread it to everybody else. So how about that? An albino, a pie ball, we've had this in our cabin for a little bit of time here. And of course, this is just a change that happens on some deer. It doesn't make them sick or ill or anything like that. There you go, there's our pie ball resident mounted baby buck. Now, we're indeed gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna show you where they actually take care of fawns and bears at the Pocono Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. <laughs> 